uh, Alpaca workflow and also the workflow we will use in the next couple of days. So as you probably have noticed by now, uh, our, our workflow is based on CMake. And starting tomorrow, we will be, uh, look at this, uh, more and more details of Alpaca. This uh, also means that we will build some stuff, like in ex examples. Uh, we require an up-to-date CMake, meaning 3.15 or more recent. This also means that all examples in the upcoming lectures will also require CMake 3.15 or more recent versions. If you have absolutely no CMake available and also don't want to install CMake and you hate CMake, you, we have special standalone headers available. Uh, these are specific to the uh, different accelerators you can use with uh, Apaka. So, for example, if you want to use CUDA GPUs, you can just include the standalone header for the CUDA runtime. However, you will have to guarantee for all dependencies, compatibilities, and compiler-specific flags associated with this. So, CMake actually does a lot of work in the background to ensure the compatibility and uh, the uh, seamless finding of different backends. So if you don't want to use CMake or can't use CMake, you have to do all this hard work yourself. This will require a lot of development overhead. But if you want it, it's there, and uh, you can uh, disregard CMake if it's necessary. Uh, yes, Andrea. In fact, hi, uh, good morning. Uh, in fact, uh, this is uh, how we are planning to use Alpac in CMS. And, uh, why we help develop this uh, same functionality for Kapla as well, where you can just include things and you don't need to use uh, CMake. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I think I didn't get the question. No, it was not a question. It was merely a comment that uh, for the CMS case, uh, we don't use CMake to build the experimental software, so we are going to use this uh, header-only approach. Oh, okay. Does that work well for you? Uh, yes, so far it's fine, yes. Okay, good to know. Thanks. So if you uh, take a look at our Apaka group, you will see Apaka itself, which is the abstraction library for parallel kernel acceleration. And this will be the main focus of the lectures in the next days. You will also probably notice Kupla or Kapla if you speak Klingon, which is a C++ user interface for the platform independent library Apaka. This is a thin layer over Apaka and features a CUDA style API. This is mainly intended for porting existing CUDA codes. So if you already have a CUDA application, and you want to port this to Alpaca, and you don't want to uh, actually use Alpaca, but do, get done with it in a, as low effort as possible, you can use Kupla. It features, features most of Alpaca's features, and, uh, but however, since it is more or less rather CUDA specific, we won't cover this here. So if you're interested, just interested in importing a CUDA program, maybe Kupla is also the way to go for you. All slides will be uploaded after uh, the corresponding lecture took place. I believe today I actually did this before, so uh, all the slides are already available online. We will upload the slides to both Indico and our uh, special repository for the slides. The lecture sessions are recorded. Once we have obtained the videos, we will send around links. And we will also uh, upload some examples over the next couple of days. The last repository doesn't actually, isn't actually public yet, but we will uh, make it public once we get to the actual examples we want to take a more detailed look at. There is also a quite handy cheat sheet slash FAQ available. It features most of the common used Apaka functions and Apaka functionality and how to use them. It's, uh, I think it's like two A4 pages and it was done uh, by my colleague Sergey. So many thanks, Sergey, for doing this work. And uh, please have a look at it. It covers most of what Alpaca can do in a quite uh, abstract or easy to understand way. All right. 
that's it with the lessons. Are there any questions regarding this specific lesson before we get to the general questions? <laughs>